Hey, this is Jacob from International Precision Engineering, and today I want to start a new project, which is going to be to make a lightweight positioning system out of this Chinese CNC router. I also want to start by saying that uh, if you're following my videos, or the few that I've made, um, we've done a really good job of finding work, but unfortunately our niche has been to do projects that we can't talk about. So, which is great because we could charge more and it's, those tend to be the funner projects, but unfortunately we can't talk about it, we can't market it, we can't share, so that explains the lack of videos. But this project is for the company itself, so we should be able to talk about this, walk you through every step of the process, and we can go from there. So let me show you this machine and talk about what we're going to do. You could buy these machines on eBay for, I don't know, 500 bucks or something like that for this 3-axis, and this is the what they call the CNC 3020, and I don't know who makes it, it's some company in China, but it comes with a little 8th inch uh, ER11 collet and spindle, which I've removed. Um, it comes with all of the mounts for the NEMA 17 motors. It comes with the couplers um, and the controller. Uh, so it's a 3-axis controller. It's a PWM variable speed spindle controller. And I don't have that box, but throughout the project you'll see it. I actually don't even plan on using it because I, when I walk into a show or something, I want to take this and I want to have this as light as possible and I want it to look decent. So I probably won't use this and I'll replace all of the electronics and put them underneath the table here. Um, uh, some of the other things I'm going to do, I'm hoping to do this today, but I need to cut this spindle off here, the spindle mount, and we're going to bolt a plate that we can bolt whatever we want to it. Um, sort of just like a surface plate or a optical breadboard if you're into the, sort of the R&D industry. I'd like to, I'd really like to remove this, these aluminum tops here and replace it with granite just because that's what the uh, metrology industry uses and I think that this machine will be good to mount one of our sensors on for when we're at trade shows. But let me, let me walk you around this machine um, and show you how it's made. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that buy these or inquire about them. How can you get a 3-axis positioner for that cheap? And uh, to be quite honest, this is the second one that we have and they, they have their limitations. Um, but for the money, you can't beat it. You can't even buy the parts for $500. So. Let, let's let's walk through it and get a closer look at it. So what you're looking at here is the Z-axis spindle mount and uh, they're trapezoidal screws based with uh, a A-back bearing on each side and four linear bearings on I think it's probably half inch chrome rod here. Um, the the nut, instead of having a half nut, there's no adjustment here that I know of, but they're just Delrin, so, uh, and I think that they're long enough that it avoids having backlash. It's pretty tight, and all the bearings are pretty tight. Um, you know, and then the spindle just mounts in this bore, which is uh, clamped. And right on the spindle body. I don't have it here, but I, you know, maybe in a later video I'll show you, but it's actually a really crappy design because this this clamp crushes the motor and there's nothing in there except a steel body. So in my opinion, I don't know, it's just pretty much a terrible design, but again, what do you get for $500? And I'm going to say probably not much. But you know, all in all, it's a decent platform. I mean, it's pretty solid. The when you're milling with it, I've done stainless, I've done titanium on them, and you just got to know what you're doing and use as small a bits as possible, highest RPM, keep your feeds up, um, and it eats through bits like there's no tomorrow, but, you know, again, for the money, you really can't beat it. You really can't, so 
and give you an in-depth look at this spindle mount, which is, you know, probably one of the more expensive pieces on this machine, and it's a shame that we're going to cut it, but I just don't see how I can, uh, I don't see how I can salvage this whole contraption here and keep the alignment and do all the boring for everything. I mean, you know, I, I think I can cut this thing in a way that I can salvage both halves and then just make it so that I can sort of tap my plate that's going to go where this is into this into the the the, the you know the guide here or the rails and then once this is off I'll be able to tap into this with another plate and be able to sort of reuse this but if you look at it it's an extrusion you can tell it's sort of uh, uh, this the finish here looks like a mill finish but they actually bored the the diameter for the motor and um, turned the, each face on a lathe. I really don't know why they did that, but I mean, you can tell just by the machining pattern that it's concentric with the bore, and that you know it's it was it was definitely done a lathe. Um, and then I, I guess they just milled this out, drilled and tapped it for the deller in there. But I think there's snap rings in here, but again, I, I don't I don't know. It looks like that, so. There's definitely some decent machining on this, or, or uh, uh, some time, and, and you know, as as we kind of walk around this machine, you know, there's not too much machining. There's some uh, these bolts here, the cap screws are recessed, but other than that, it's just drilled, tapped, and it's just fact, you know, like straight off the mill extrusions like these angle plates and um, I mean even the table itself is is extrusions here you can see and literally they're just screwed on with with screws these uh, the the I don't know if I'll be able to get the camera low enough but you can see these the linear slides down here they're not even uh, tapped or recessed they're just threaded on the end probably saw cut judging by the rest of this machine and then bolted in just right into, you know, kind of an end, uh, you know, into this extrusion here. I mean, you could tell here, like, here's a good example. So this is the, you know, whatever you want, X or Y feed. And to to secure the bearing, they just literally have these sort of, you know, button head screws. And I don't know, it's not, it's not the best design, but it works. And that screw's tight. And what I think they did probably was to smash the screw in. So when they they cut this the you know the lead screw, they probably cut it too long purposely, and then sort of press it in with these bearings to kind of eliminate the backlash. And you know, like I said, for the money, it's it's not a bad machine, but don't don't think that you're going to be running a business off it or doing any kind of you know high volume production because they're just they're just not made for for that the, there's resonant frequencies all over the spindle uh, you know and I'll I'll actually do a, a quick snapshot of the spindle itself but it's just the ER adapter pushed onto like a I don't know five millimeter shaft or something with a press fit and amazingly you could spool it up to a good 20,000 rpm but it's just it's just a, a, a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. It really needs more meat to be able to, you know, be cutting stainless or anything. And the thing is, like, oh, you could say, well, I could cut wood. Yeah, but wood, what are you going to do with wood? Um, acrylic, it does acrylic pretty good, but the problem with acrylic at those speeds is it just melts. It wants to melt. And as soon as it starts to create heat, um, it just... It just sticks to the bit and then it's over. So you really got to babysit it while you're doing it. But, you know, the machine, it's pretty good. They give you the cable tracks, which are, you know, pretty nice. Um, just reading a lot of the reviews, there's kind of, uh, there's a lot of complaints about the wiring being crap, but I've never had problems. And, you know, I've had these machines for a couple of years. So this one here is, you know, fresh out of the box. I haven't even put the motors on. I mean, they got decent connections for the for the motors but I, you know I can't see how there's problems but that's one of the complaints
All right, so we're set up on the mill here. I've got the spindle holder out, it's in the vise. And what I wanna show you here is I've got our cutoff saw. And the way that I like to line it up is I just eyeball it. And when you look down the blade, you can see right where it's gonna cut. And so we're just gonna set up on this. Um, forgive the shaky view here, but so all I'm gonna do is just lower it lower it right until I find the point where I want to cut and I'm probably about there so to talk a little bit more about my setup here so I have it upside down so that when I cut I don't drop chips on the rails and if if I really cared I would tape them off but I kind of don't um, you know this these are designed to get chips on them but in reality I, you know, you really should have them covered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. I have it kind of leveled on my vise on this bottom edge. So when I cut this, I'll just be able to face it really quick and then this half will be done. Um, or as much as I'm going to do with it today. And then I'm going to flip it and face parallel to this face here. Or maybe set up parallels right on my rods to get it as, to get the face that we're gonna bolt the plate on as parallel to the z-axis as we possibly can. So, so the feeds and the spindle speed that I use is just enough so that my oil doesn't go flying everywhere. You don't need to go fast here. The, the cutter can handle pretty much whatever you throw at it when you're cutting through aluminum. And this has got some hardy teeth on it, so I think we should be good. So I'm just gonna run through speeds. Feed rate, you could you could just tell. Um, just listen to it, it'll start singing. It'll start singing when it doesn't like it. Um, the one thing I'll always say is watch your pinch points with these. They're huge. They carry a lot of weight. Um, right now we'll just squeak by. And I like to cut as close to the arbor or the spindle center line as possible. And what that does is it gives the blade a lot more rigidity um, while you're cutting. It just just works out better for me. I don't, I don't know. But again, we're not we're not making these to make money. This is a one-off thing. So by the time you get it all set up, you get your feeds and speeds right. I mean, it'll probably turn out a lot different from when you started. Just throw a little tight on the vise there. I don't know, I thought I felt it move better to be safe than sorry. But just going through. So I've got a pretty aggressive tooth on this saw here. And uh, keeps it from gumming up. It keeps, you know, it, it seems to be working out quite well. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think we're, we're doing good here. I'm gonna lay into it. I could see a lot of flex in this piece because Unfortunately, I cut this side. This side here is a clamp. <laughs> I should have, in hindsight, I should have grabbed here instead of here, but, you know, oh well. When we start to get to the end of this cut, this is going to get real flimsy, so I, I, I'll just take it real slow. Uh, there's not a whole lot of cutting forces with these, or a lot of load with these cutoff wheels, but, like I said, just be aware you're, uh, <laughs> You know, a little bit of time and patience will save you a lot, will go a long way to make sure that you don't ruin your parts. And you know, like I said, this is probably one of the more expensive ones to reproduce, so I, I really don't want to mess this up. If I had to guess, this is probably 60-61. Um, I could... I could hear the inclusions in the saw, hitting the saw, and you know you really got to be careful with 6061. There's a lot of times there's cobalt inclusions, and you'll tear a carbide bit, carbide bit right, right up. You'll you'll shatter the bit if you're running too fast. All right, so that was funny. Uh, the mill. Something must have happened, I bumped the mill, I don't know. But the camera came right off into my hands, luckily, and not on the floor. But 
we're back. We're up and running again here. I got you probably a better shot. I don't know. Apologize, but we're running through. Everything seems to be good. We got enough of the blade. All our pinch points were clear sailing. Just run it. Again, I'm going to watch that back corner. I'm going to watch the blade come through that last piece and that and that part better be in my hand or it's going to go flying. So I got plenty of oil. It sounds good. Cutting smooth. Chips look good. Good size. Um, if this is a really long cut or particularly wide, what I like to do is take a chip brush and clean the teeth out. Um, no matter how good or concentric your arbor is, the blades, when they cut the teeth, they're never concentric perfectly, so what ends up happening is only a few teeth cut until they wear out, and then some of the other ones around it start to take over, so, <laughs> and, and there we are, we're off. So I'm going to get that cleaned up, shut this down, left the saw, and I'll bring you in on what this thing looks like here, but beautiful, right? Nice, nice clean cut, uh, nice flat face, so we should be able to just run a, run a facing mill right across that, and, uh, and that'll be good. All right, so we are set up in the vise here. We have our Z axis in. We have parallels under the each side of the rail here and then clamped into the vise. So when we face this, we'll be nice and parallel to the Z axis. And all we're gonna do is come in and buzz what we just cut off to make it nice and flat and get it ready to tap.
People always ask how I get these weird shapes. Um, you know, as you can see here, this is kind of like a beveled plate with um, some different angles and things. Uh, you can see on the front all the chamfers on the back, chamfers. Um, just really to lighten it up, keep it strong, but lighten it up. And the way that I do it is with this dovetail cutter and I just run in and throw them all off, throw all the edges off. Um, or what I do is clamp it in the vise at an angle and hit it with an end mill. If it's something like stainless or titanium or a harder, harder to machine material, I'll, I'll clamp it like this and get an end mill on it. And uh, you can use setup clamps, you know, like if you want to 60 degree throw this in there lean it up against there or a sign bar, a sign bar or really anything but a lot of times for light weighting it's just aesthetic so the angle doesn't really matter the only time it really matters is on the corners where the, where the two chamfers come together you want to get that the same same depth and you know usually I'll just do that by eye but throw it on the machine and see how it looks. All right, I've got it mounted back up. I've got it kind of put back together with a couple screws just to make sure it fits. Um, and the way that I designed this, the bottom of the mounting plate is flush with the bottom of the, like what I would say is the Y axis and when it's all the way up, it just clears the motor mount. And what I have here is a, a quarter 20 by half array. So you can bolt whatever you want. Um, if you need it to go lower or higher, just bolt a extension plate onto it. Um, again, this is just basically going to be a positioner. So it's not like you would mount a spindle to that or anything. So I. As, as you saw, it's all lightweighted on the back. Um, just, again, the overall goal is to keep the machine light. So one thing I noticed that is kind of aggravating to me, but I wanted to strip the wires off, but they put these on and then soldered the ends. <laughs> so I can't, I can't pull these out of this hole without either cutting this plate or cutting the wires so uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there but I'll probably deal with that soon because what I'd like to do is start pulling all the pieces off this machine and get them get them cut get them get them lightweighted um, throw them on the CNC and and uh, start removing some weight but I think that's a that's a good day and we'll see you next time Bye.